Happy Wednesday to you. I hope and pray that today finds you doing well. It is good to be with you uh, virtually on this Wednesday morning. We're going to be looking today at Psalm 4, uh, Psalm chapter 4. Of course, before we do that, just a few quick announcements again for us. Of course, the Green Pyramids continue to remind us to be intentional in our own faith development. They also remind us uh, to continue to be in prayer for those suffering from COVID-19. Uh, we will be having sermon group tonight at 5.30 on Zoom. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 24, verses 36 to 48. Luke chapter 24, verses 36 through 48. Uh, we'll also have youth night tonight at 5 o'clock, and that's for our 6th through 12th graders. So we hope and pray that you'll be able to join us for that. Uh, down in the fellowship hall. And then, of course, you can always find the various events, uh, sermons, uh, devotions, all the different things going on in the life of our church on our website, petriememorial.com. Uh, as we begin our time together this morning, uh, we want to uh, have a moment of prayer. We'll, of course, be doing that from the divine hours uh, for the prayer appointed for uh, this day, Wednesday. Uh, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Almighty and everlasting God, who in the Paschal mystery established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn in this fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Let us pray the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 4. Let us hear now God's word together. Answer me when I cry out, my righteous God. Set me free from my troubles. Have mercy on me. Listen to my prayer. How long, you people, will my reputation be insulted? How long will you continue to love what is worthless and go after lies? Know this, the Lord takes personal care of the faithful. The Lord will hear me when I cry out to him. So be afraid and don't sin. Think hard about it in your bed and weep over it. Bring righteous offerings and trust the Lord. Many people say we can't find goodness anywhere. The light of your face has left us, Lord. But you have filled my heart with more joy than when their wheat and wine are everywhere. I will lie down and fall asleep in peace because you alone, Lord, let me live in safety. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Psalm 4 is an individual prayer for help in the midst of distress, in the midst of despair. The psalmist, who we believe to be David, is seeking honor uh, from God, seeking honor that comes from the Lord. He has confidence that God will hear him. Uh, though he is in the midst of distress, and he knows that his distress won't last long because God won't uh, allow that. God will continue to, to come alongside and to be with him. Honor in David's time, as he's writing this, was often attributed uh, to people based on their positions within the family structure, based on their position among friends uh, that they had, people that they associated with, as well as their status or role within the community. That's where honor was typically found. Yet it seems that David is attempting uh, here to find honor in his faithfulness to God over and above everything else. He wants his honor to come from the Lord and his place of status to come from God. Everything else has its place behind God. Uh, if he is honoring and faithful to God and receiving that honor, he, he knows that the honor of family, friends, and, and the community will follow 
or or that it may not be what he wants it to be, but he will know that he has it in the Lord. And all of us want to be honored. All of us want to have a place of honor. All of us want to be respected and loved by other people. And family is an important aspect in the life of our culture, in the life of of uh, those of us, especially I've seen in Kentucky, uh, especially small town Kentucky. And in the various appointments that I've had and the places that I've lived, uh, family is often the source of deep ties to a community. Uh, and and people are, are judged, whether rightly or wrongly, by their family, uh, by those that they associate with, right? We tend to, to have that. And when I when I first arrived here at, at Petrie, here in Elkton, Kentucky, I, I learned the names of the congregation uh, fairly quickly. With, within about a month, I knew pretty much everyone's name, much to my own surprise, as, as well as hopefully to, to yours. Uh, but I continue, I continue even, even five years later, to learn all of the connections that people have the family connections that are here in this community, the, the connections through networking and friendship, the connections just within the community at large. I continue to, to learn and to see how everyone is connected and, and how all of these things continue to move and, and flow in, in the community in which we live. And I continue to be fascinated by that. Family uh, indeed shapes us and molds us. Many people find comfort or distress in their family ties. Uh, Who we're related to is often a source of identity. Whether good or bad, uh, it's a source of identity. And I'll admit that uh, in the the familial aspect of this, I, I don't understand it very well. Uh, I have family that lives all over the country. I have some that live in California, Utah, Minnesota, Michigan, uh, Florida, Alabama. The closest I've ever lived to a grandparent when they were living was about four or five hours away. And so these uh, familial ties that many people have uh, are something that are are very foreign to me. I have uh, cousins that I've only met once. I couldn't probably pick them out of a lineup. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Abby's family is, is very close, and they all live in, in a, a general area, and they see each other far more often than I have ever seen just my own family. And I'm not saying it's good or bad or, or anything in between, but these are just these different realities, and I'm, I'm fascinated. Uh, and and I, I'll admit somewhat jealous of, of those who have grown up near family uh, as, as much as they have, but it's, it's still – a little distant and foreign to me in just my understanding of how all this goes. Yet for all of the the comforts and status that David has as king, uh, all of the things that we would automatically attribute to him as king, all the honor that would be bestowed upon him, he still seeks to trust in God to allow him to live in safety, we see in verse 8. He trusts in God for safety. He doesn't trust in his family or his friends or or the people in his community. His trust around this is in God. I think there's some trust with the others, but but primarily it's with God. Uh, he doesn't put his trust in other people alone. Uh, and often we we find that when we do that, uh, we we are let down because we're fallen. We're we're uh, often unable to live up to the expectations that that people have for us or that maybe we have for ourselves or for others. But David is is shifting here and wanting to put all of that on God because he knows that God can stand up to it. He knows that God can continue to be that source of honor and that source of safety uh, always, and he'll never let us down in that. David wants to his honor to be found in God first and foremost. Uh, This honor is life-giving. It's beneficial for his family, for his friends, for his kingdom as the king of Israel. Uh, God honors David, and he honors us when he listens to us calling out to him, we see in verse 3. He listens, and that is a way of God showing honor to us. And we, in turn, then honor God by calling him, by calling out to him, by obeying his word and the things that he calls us to do. Often people only honor us when it's beneficial to them, right? 
certainly we've we've had those relationships before where people wanted to benefit from knowing us or or maybe we wanted the benefit of knowing some people that that we knew uh, and some relationships are merely built on the, the sense of mutual benefits and we know that those can be hollow relationships and and they often uh, turn against us uh, in in various ways but that's not the case with God and I want us to hear that this morning that when we honor God when we put God above all things uh, he never leaves us or forsakes us he never lets us down and we know and can know as David does here where our safety lies Family and friends are important. The community in which we live and, and are able to contribute to is important. But it all falls flat when we honor family or friends or the community more than God. We don't truly honor or love anyone, and we can't unless we honor and love God first. David says, many people say we can't find goodness anywhere. The light of your face has left us, Lord. As followers of God, as brothers and sisters in Christ, as children of our Heavenly Father, we must continue to seek goodness. And in this search, we will find that it can only be found in God and in that right relationship with Him. When we love God above all, we will love everyone truly and appropriately and correctly as people may we truly seek life-changing relationship with god father son and holy spirit and may this relationship guide every relationship we have may we continue to embrace and enjoy our, our family and our friends and the community in which we live because of our great love for God. And may we know that the honor he gives to us by merely listening to us is the greatest honor that we'll ever receive. And we can benefit from that. And others can benefit from that as we seek to honor them as well. It has been good to be with you today. I look forward to being with you uh, in person as well as virtually on Sunday. And until then, may uh, you be blessed and may you seek to be a blessing to others. Amen and amen.